Hello, good evening, everyone. <clears throat> and uh, uh, welcome to this uh, um, expert speak talk. It's a uh, uh, planned uh, series of talks, uh, which would go every Saturday. Now, uh, the objective of this is to share some experience uh, uh, from industry experts. Uh, this, uh, so, uh, to start with today, we have uh, Kanchan, uh, Kanchan Dhankani. And uh, she is the founder and uh, uh, designer, the chief designer at uh, Kanchi's uh, uh, design studio, which was earlier Studio KD. And uh, she, uh, I, I would say that uh, she could introduce herself and uh, you know uh, get started with. So Kanchan, uh, please come online and uh, start uh, the presentation. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm Kanchan and uh, today, today I think uh, I'm going to share a few um, light projects that we did and uh, take you through a few case studies perhaps that will help you understand how industry works and uh, then we can have an open um, question and answer round at the end of it. So I'll just share my screen and take you through uh, not just my case studies but also my journey. Uh, just let me know once you can see my screen. Yes, we can see it, Kanchan. It's visible? Okay, great. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so uh, what we do is uh, branding and packaging uh, and uh, a lot of them, a lot of products that we have done is actually something which never existed and you know we have to innovate from the scratch which simply means that the concept and what it will stand for the product will stand for that also we have to decide so it's basically where uh, you know a company decides uh, that they want to do a certain uh, project in a certain direction and the brief is as wild and as open as that so that's where we start from so that's how we are a little different than the other branding and packaging companies. This is like a short cluttered shot of all the products that we have designed so far. Um, so today we will see. Uh, OK, this is the website link. You can you can see more projects once, uh, you know, I'm, I'm today just going to talk about the Dava Elixir one, this one and uh, Margo. These two will cover today. And uh, yes, please do go on the website and check more. Um, so let me tell you a little about my education background. Um, I did a five year course in applied arts from Mumbai, Sophia Polytechnic, and uh, then worked with Ogilvy for a bit. And, uh, you know, when you work in Ogilvy, people are like, oh, this is the best place to work in. And, you know, like it's the place. So um, strangely, I, I felt um, I felt incomplete there. I just felt that if this is the place, then I think I need something else. And uh, you know, so it was complicated and I thought maybe I should study a little more ahead. And I applied in an NID and um, I got through, I got through visual communication. For some reason I wanted animation, but anyway, maybe life wanted me to do this. So I got into visual communication. And um, then I did uh, one semester in uh, Hanover, Germany. Uh, that was through an exchange program. And of course, uh, life is a continuous process of learning. So I just feel a student till date. So till date, it's like, you know, every project is like I'm giving my jury. It's literally that experience. <laughs> so that's how it is. So um, let me let me actually share exactly how it all started. Um, it will it will give you a little idea of uh, you know how things really um, you know how how you can achieve your dreams you know and how how actually from nowhere you do get a spark of your dream that what you want to do you know. So um, I'll just share exactly what what was the journey. So this is the campus life at NID. Um, that time it was only ten students per class and this is my GD uh, graphic design batch so we were 10 and um, so I was talking about how I went to um, 
uh, Hanover and uh, you know did some projects there. So um, I'm just showing you what my uh, projects looked like when I was a student. Uh, fairly, you have to see this because uh, that's the journey. You know, um, it used to be very abstract, and um, this is this is a project um, uh, daydreaming project actually, which I did in Hanover. Um, mostly I chose this subject because I was literally daydreaming in the classrooms because everything was in German. They were speaking in Dutch and, uh, you know, uh, I would never be in the present. I would be in a trip somewhere else because I don't understand anything that's going on in the class. So it was complicated. Um, and of course, after, after the class, I would get a summary of what happened in the class through a few people who would speak English and, you know, we could sit together and discuss uh, about the class. So that's how the program was going on. So mostly I was daydreaming in the class and that became my project. So this is some doodles and from the doodles, um, you know, I formed these loops of thoughts and, uh, you know, this, this, like how you have a font family, I had this form family. Um, arriving each day, I would make something and, and you know, um, uh, this flowy, elastic like looking uh, uh, forms would uh, evolve through uh, just the doodles. So this is the project that I did. And, and then, um, you know, from there, um, that there was experience design that we had to do. And, and, you know, I thought, why not the same thing, you know, this pushing and pulling of thoughts from one thought to another thought, the way we really daydream, you know, it's never the linkage is same, you know, if I'm thinking Christmas, then I go for red and then I go somewhere else, maybe something else comes up in my head. So it's a connection of thoughts, but definitely not something which, um, uh, you know, the, the loops are, the loops are there, but it's, it's, you can say uh, jittery thoughts, you know, like some, some are deep, some are shallow, some are nothing. So um, in experience design, what I did is, um, you know, I, I made these uh, lycra stretchable material uh, suspension and, uh, you know, I, I asked people to just uh, feel, you know, they were actually made to uh, remove the shoes and be on stocking so that they can actually slip and be experiencing the pull and push of, uh, you know, these complicated um say the lines let's let's say these are thoughts and you know how the push and pull happens and i made some photographs while they would um experience this and you know uh, just be and play around with this installation so i took some photographs and um, then i do, did realize that um the photographs and the forms that i made earlier do have some kind of similarity and i kind of kind of started finding more of these similarities and um, so there was a series of, uh, you can say, images and the forms. Uh, and, you know, uh, that was an exhibition that I did. And uh, with the experience uh, design, uh, we also had one final installation, which I did in um, the fire exit, basically. So this is the fire exit of our college building. And uh, I, I did this exhibition on one of the floors. And uh, we had these red um strips running across from some flows you know two three flows that was going up and down so uh, this is of course uh, we had to defend everything why why fire exit why this place what everything so um you know emergency escape <laughs> so daydreaming for me was an emergency escape you know because what would i do otherwise um because i wouldn't understand much in the class so it was my emergency exit to kind of go for a trip in my mind so uh, that was my reasoning and this this is how abstract my world was before I actually, you know, started with industry work. So these are some glimpses of the projects that I did there. Um, yeah, this is the emergency exit. And uh, um, in in that trip, I met um, Lena. She would she would be our English translator, and she would explain us what happened in the class and so on. So she is actually from Turkey, and and she told me about how excited she is about this coconut oil, which reads pure hundred percent coconut oil. And uh, she would buy this for a very high cost over eBay, and uh, would be very happy for. Uh, you know, receiving this coconut oil and, you know, sometimes it's out of stock and so on. 
and i would just wonder that how how can it be like like how this tacky bottle be so exciting for someone so why she would just keep telling me how uh, you know indian hair is so good and maybe that's because of this kind of hair oil and so on it never clicked me i could never understand that when i enter into their malls and shopping centers and i see their products i go gaga saying that what kind of wonderful looking products these are and for them it's the other way around you know they they find all these things uh, really uh, you know they find value in our products and this i think a small conversation like this was the turning point for me so um, i had in my mind that you know someday i will go back to india and kind of change the way things look you know they 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 are uh, they better be i mean if if the outside world is seeing some kind of uh, interest in this then we need to like uh, you know elevate the experience of the same so um that's that's how it basically started so the you know kira of product came from there basically <laughs> so so when i came back um, as you all do a final project outside in the industry uh, the same thing for us we also did the final uh, project and um, uh, i applied to many places uh, and my goal was more or less to kind of upgrade products and the way the experience is you know uh, it, i just find the oil bottle especially very tacky so um, and luckily uh, we had um, we had one opportunity coming from unilever where i applied again and i kind of thought about you know how we could modernize hair oils and you know um but um, yeah let me also tell you industry being in the streets very slow <laughs> okay so and um, yeah just so that you don't expect things to happen overnight i think a lot of patience is required um it's 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 very different very different uh, you know these decisions are big decisions and it it kind of take time so um i applied and i forgot all about it because it was 6 months and there was no reply and we had to obviously complete the project um so i did a project some else and um after the project was over basically my industry project was just about to get over is when i get a call from unilever saying yes uh, you know we could meet and maybe you know we could start this project so i was under this dilemma now whether to go not to go and what to do uh, but of course uh, because it is the opportunity and the dream project that i wanted to do i went ahead and did the second industry project so uh, this project honestly to tell you about it um, it was a complete experiment uh, this was something like you know uh, it is about modernizing hair oils but we do not know if hair oil is the answer to it or it has to be a complete different product to kind of you know replace hair oil so it was a very experimental or you can say a research based project where we had to understand what the consumers want and um, uh, honestly it was more of a research for a project than literally a design project so it it was a deep research i used to travel a lot uh, all around india to understand uh, these or fgds place and i would i would go and uh, look at the local market also talk to people also and find out you know what what is it that they think about the hair oils and you know how how is their perception about it so yeah a lot of brainstorming and a lot of as i said it was more of a research project and um, what came out of the answers were that you know uh, everybody have recipes for hair oils very different recipes and everybody wants to make hair oil a lot more effective um and how you can say you know they want to they want to make it powerful you know so they would add different herbs to it or uh, you know mix different kind of oils prepare their own recipes basically some some or the other way so um that's that's more or less uh, what happened uh, everybody had different recipes but definitely somebody was either a simple thing like heating oil before use was at least done to make the oil potent so this this is a common habit that they want the hair oil to be um boosted 
um but the recipes differed completely the north wanted something else the south wanted something else and uh, of course many recipes around so um let me show you the visuals of few oil bottles which were sold but there was no oil in it so this is a south uh, this product especially you can see my arrow so the right hand one so this one uh, is actually a herb bottle so there is all herbs and jerry booty inside it there's no oil to it okay and there is a reason to it so in south almost uh, every household or you can say more or less every household um make their own oil you know they have their own uh, mill and you know they they extract oils from their local mills and they use that so what they sell is this jerry booty bottle and uh, what the users do is they pour in their oil and let it soak and then use it as hair oil so this is a practice which is very common in south india and um, the product that you see on the other side uh, this is from uh, this is from uh, somewhere near sri lanka so here the oil and the uh, herb both is mixed together but this is this is very you can say short scale production not really a mass product so because it comes with a lot of microbes and you know there are chances that a lot can go bad so um this is from the consumers need right so if consumers are making their own recipes and if somebody just puts all those goodness in one bottle and you know says just add your hair oil to it it becomes an easier process so this is this is you can say from the consumers you know this is what they need um so and i also figured that you know there's no one answer to this uh, there are many answers to this you know there are two types of clear consumers where one says okay i am inclined towards oiling and i don't mind the stickiness and the oiliness and uh, the experience that comes along with it uh, but i will oil my hair and the other one will say i cannot bear with the stickiness oiliness pimple and everything all the other things that comes with it and therefore oiling is you can say you know if i can if there is a way i mean you know they want to kind of do it but they guilty of not doing it but they 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 don't want to i mean they don't want to go through the bad experience so if that's how it is and i actually relate this very easily by saying that some like palak the way it is and they can have palak soup and some uh, cannot bear with that <laughs> and they really look for alternatives like palak paratha uh, noodles pasta anything like that so you know that's that's the thing so the main ingredient and the nourishment remains same but the form changes yeah so um so yeah that 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 is that um from here um so from here um all what i understood is it's all about sensorial engineering so it's basically about the same product which is palak how how creatively can we make it better and consumable is the question so that's that's where the role of sensorial engineering comes through and just to talk about in a simple way what does that mean is to improve the way it looks smells tastes feels all of that yeah so it's the five senses that we are talking about in short so um you know this is this is how this is how the mind works we look at something we judge something by smelling it we judge something by tasting it and then there's some thing thing happening in our mind where we take a call whether we like this product don't like this product or you know so on so this is how we kind of actually experience through all all the um, uh, all those senses and and that's how we we uh, you know take a call about a product so um what what we decided was like yes we have to improve and improve in many ways not just the way it looks but also the way it smells the way uh, we hold we experience everything of of the oils and um, uh, a lot of south uh, uh, consumers spoke about uh, um um shufla um being very good for hair like they would replace this and shufa shufa leaves with their uh, shampoos they would really use uh, this as an alternative for hair wash so um from and and it's it's a 
gorgeous looking flower. I mean, uh, if we had to pick an ingredient, uh, why not something which is as appealing as this? And uh, then let's talk about smell. Um, oh, you know, uh, oils and perfumes are very closely related. If you see, um, um, you know, the attar, which is the precious oils, basically, uh, the bare oils, basically, uh, from which the perfumes are made, you can say. They are uh, usually in a small quantity and they're in a very small bottle. So, um, and, and, and people all know how powerful and potent they are, you know, that they're very strong and so on. So we also derived some parallel uh, ideas from there that, you know, they are like perfumes are gorgeous looking and they, they look so wonderful, you know, the shapes, it's so aspiring. Why not make oil bottles look as aspiring as this? So this was for the smell and the look. And uh, feel, let's talk about feel. Um, it, it does matter what is the consistency of hair oil that you're putting on. Uh, you know, if it is too sticky, if it is too light, we judge it as it's nothing, it's not going to do power, it's not going to be powerful. If it is too uh, thick, then uh, we are worried about, you know, how, how it will come off. Uh, you know, it will need many shampoo rounds to wash it off. So there's a lot of judgments through the viscosity of oil. And uh, finally, the color. So, um, you know, um, there are colors which make you feel that the oil is synthetic and there are colors which will make you feel that the oil is less potent just because of the strength of the color of oil. So all of these are a part of design and we need to take a call on each factor to arrive at the right product. So also this is a part of design, you know, this needs to be carefully curated of, you know, which level the consistency should be and, you know, what should be the color and, you know, uh, so on. So um, this is the first sample that we made, like, all what I did was just, I took a bottle of oil, a regular bottle of oil, a little better looking one, sorry, not regular. <laughs> And I dropped in uh, the flour, the shoe flour, and uh, I kept it over for a weeks, you know, like just let it soak down to see how it looks and reacts and, you know. Um, so this is the first prototype, like, you know, it's not even a prototype, it's just the first dip that is required as a visual evidence of what we are going to do, like, you know, um, like it just becomes easier to explain people what if the oil was like this? So uh, you can say a quick, quick, quick mock-up. And then comes the design phase where, um, you know, we, we know how each things look when it comes to hair care category. So we know a shampoo looks somewhat like this. We know a conditioner would look somewhat like this. A serum would look, look like this. A treatment mask would be usually a jar. Um, or traditional hair oils would look like this, non-sticky, go a little like this. So we do have spaces marked, but for modern oil, what, what exactly do we do? So yeah, as I had mentioned earlier also, inspiration was more of the, uh, you can say, aroma oils and, you know, uh, those kind of oils and perfume-based oils, basically. So uh, taking inspiration from there, um, there was you know, like there was something that we wanted to replicate was, uh, you know, making it look powerful because if we give in a huge size, then, uh, you know, uh, the efficacy is at a doubt some, somewhere. Um, if it is precious oil, it rather be seen and, you know, experienced as precious oil. So, um, you know, this, this is like, what we want to say is it's it's heavily uh, potent oil, so you don't need much. Basically, you apply less and you get all the benefit. So um, a very quick, uh, you can say, prototype again for understanding how big should the bottle be and how, how would you hold it and experience it? How would you 
take it in your hand because for the first time we are trying something like a pump over a hair oil uh serums do have pumps by the way but for hair oil this was the first time we were trying so um you know how the experience will be will it be comfortable to kind of take it in hand and you know all of that so this is a very very quick mock up literally made by a, a ohp sheet and you know like when i presented this i remember everybody looked at me like seriously you know they they had no reaction <laughs> actually they had reaction they were like are you serious this is how you do product design so <laughs> so everybody was a little zapped about this that you know it's just paper folded and what's going on here uh, but yeah these are these are small ways in which you do quick prototyping to understand where we are going and make it tangible enough to explain your team members what is it that you're looking for or what is it that you you're making so a physical sample uh, you know is is somewhat like this so yeah so that that's about the bottle of course uh, yes there there was drawings later and there was uh, 3d printing later and yes all of that really happened um, but yeah i'm just showing you how quickly you can get into proto phase and uh, you know keep testing all what you do in, in physical world uh so yeah that is that uh, now let me talk talk through about um uh the graphics journey so on uh, dog elixir was the name crafted okay um that's basically to get get the oil word a little lower basically elixir um elixir would mean a magical potion and uh, since we are trying here to kind of modernize hair oils the attempt was to kind of make make a new word or a new sub brand that can can be seen dark basically so um two challenges here one uh, that we need to explain people that you know what what is the difference here so the the flower petal root which we were exploring how can we have reflection of that same thing in the branding as well as how do we have the sub branding done and how do we relate it uh with the uh so the exercise was on two sides so with flower petals i tried many different petals and i got a conclusion that it needs to be very very simple and uh um what was it song okay so um yeah so where will we so yes uh, so with flower petals um things like many trial and errors and uh, also also we had to borrow some parts of what what the dove uh, brand looks like and you know what 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 could be easily ad adaptable within the guidelines so yeah like you know the conscious decision of making an e softer e and so on um let me quickly show you construction part very small uh change but it kind of you know gives a very good effect and very good what you can say connection between the mother brand so uh from dove uh there is a small curve and there is a small um you know uh, shape that that was taken ahead and it's actually it just goes here okay it's a very small part but ultimately when you put all of it together it kind of yes nobody really can say it came from the word but you know there is a very subconscious way of relating it and it's easier to relate even when dove is not written here that you know this brand belongs to dove so this is a small fine uh, you can say um, fine uh, uh, finishes that kind of help to relate to the mother brand so yes this is how it all came together um that's the packaging it came with a carton and um oh uh, yeah so and this is just by the way for the first time that dove was attempting colors otherwise dove from that time was only in the white space so you could see how colorful it looks and uh, uh 
you know it is very different than the codes of dove basically and cotton cotton basically uh, not just helped uh, you know uh, making the shelf life better but also uh, helps you connect with the whiteness of dove uh, which the brand is standing for so uh, so that's the project that was my first project and then then from there uh, i did many more oils project um, so even clinic plus and many more so that's that's how everything started and uh, the whole idea of elevating packaging design in india was getting stronger and stronger in my my mind and um, you know uh, as a as a um, fresh bee you could say you know who is just just uh, you know graduated at trying things and big missions like this um i was always curious why can't we go a little more creative and you know do things which are more uh, like you know which 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 will help elevate uh, packaging design and i got my answers because of the research that was done so the research of the oil study actually made me realize a lot of things and i will actually share this for you also to understand um what are the constraints what what really what really is not you know what really is the thing because of which you know we are in a certain way and things in our country are working in a certain way so um basically the conversation is why the world on behance looks so pretty and you know the designs are so gorgeous and when it comes to real world it's just it just doesn't look that it's a design it's just very simple and functional so uh, you know this is this is what the behance world looks like and yes we all know the reality is somewhat like this yeah so this was my quest that time and uh, i know every every student that comes to my studio i know that they are thinking the same so this is something that i brief to all all the students who come to me and you know you know whoever is starting and whoever needs to know this basically so um there are some questions right now okay i'm going to show you some visuals and um, you could you could tell me um you could tell me if if you think that this is about what do you think this is about you know what is your interpretation of this visual is it letting go or is it trying to hold on so there will be a pop up on screen let me see if that's happening and you could vote from there actually ma'am uh, that poll isn't working so we have just put the question on the chat so okay i i'll, I'll put it on chat it's with really you okay. okay okay no problem so they have started answering so you can go ahead what screen are you seeing on on my share right now uh we are seeing your powerpoint slide show but it's not the slide show screen it's the powerpoint screen okay okay Okay, are are you seeing a vote poll right now? Kanchan, I think people are replying on the chat. That's how Sagar has uh, uh, Sagar asked a question in the chat. Okay, it's going by one and two. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm seeing there now. Yeah, I'm there right now. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your answers, guys. Okay. 
So we have say about um, say many ones and a couple of twos. And uh, yeah, what I could say is uh, it's 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 really on your interpretation and your background knowledge of how much do you know about this slide, you know, how much do you know about the artist and you know where this was made and there's a lot to it, you know. Uh, and and so and so people have different opinions about it. Oh, and by the way, somebody wrote 20 here, which means 2020. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this this art is an ever evolving piece, you know. Um, so yes, the whole point here is to tell you that um, there's no no real answer here. Everybody knows different stories about it. Let me just move this to show you what what really is in behind. And it says there is always hope. And this is also a big part of this artwork, you know. So people who know that there is a text here know it, that it is about, you know, uh, what it is about, basically. Uh, people who know that this, this uh, is behind a school wall, they know even better context about why, why the artist made this. So there is lots about it, basically. Um, let me go full screen. Okay, let me let me raise another question. I, I think everybody knows about this. <laughs> um, when the auction was done about the print of the same, um, and uh, you know when the auction just got over, the the frame started shredding this print. Yeah. So uh, and and I think this was a big noise, you know, uh, and and many questions were going on. So um, I hope you are able to see the second slide when I'm showing you the destroyed art. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Oh. Second slide. Okay. Okay. Great. 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 All right. So so for this one, I could just say that you know um, there were many questions about what do you think the art is doing like was this destroyed or a new type of art was created. So I want to know your opinion. I think what what is important here to is is kind of figure, you know, how how differently the group which is present here is thinking. So uh, do do answer uh, one as for destroyed and two for new art. OK. Let's see how this goes. Hey, we have two, 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 two. Oh, oh, most of us are thinking it's new art, looks like. Nice. Okay. All dos. Okay. So far, all dos. Great. Okay. Okay, so I think I think this is this is again because we all do belong from uh, you know the art field. We are inclined towards it, and we know we we do think in a certain way. And I think the pattern is getting evident uh, as you are typing too. I know I know what you mean, you know. Uh, and and this by the way, this this whole piece was uh, renamed as Love Is in the Bin. OK, and instantly there was a name to it. So um, yeah, see, this is this is exactly what I mean. Uh, people with a certain similar background or even with a certain um, commonality would think in a certain way. And you can clearly visit, visit the chat and see how uh, you know this is happening. So that is that. Now let's go to the second, third one, OK? Uh, moving to the third one, this will be very quick. And this is actually a most important slide because this is the dilemma I think uh, most of the people have. So while parking, you might have seen this slide, uh, this, this kind of sign where it would be, you know, small numbers written here, one, three, five, seven, whatever. So what is your understanding or your takeaway from here? What does this road sign mean? Does it mean park on odd day? Or does it mean don't park on all days? What does this really mean? So uh, one for park on all day, two for don't park on all days. So let's start with this. Let's see the answers. OK, many more coming. OK, 
Okay, 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 okay. Okay. All right. So finally, it looks like most of us answered two. Okay, but there are people who did answer one also. Okay. So now, uh, let's go full screen. Okay. So the question and answer round stops here. But you did see the pattern. Okay. Did was it was it fun to understand this? Like you know how we all think and how how simple visuals can also be. You know, so complex to decode, you know, like few of us do think that it means Paco not days. So it is it is confusing, you know, like signs and symbols are open to interpretations and then therefore it will be open to many, many interpretations. Yeah. So let me show you uh, how how it was solved in Spain. Uh, you know, th this is the sign. OK, so this this sign means do not park on even day uh, odd days and this sign means do not park on even days so they solved it this way i mean isn't it simple beautiful but you know it will be very complicated to implement this in india and kind of follow this in india and there is a reason for it there is definitely a reason the kind of um, as i said you know we all have a little commonality and therefore we kind of uh, look into a certain way and kind of interpret things in a certain way. India is so diverse and with so many different cultures, backgrounds, education uh, system differences, um, languages, uh, so many things, you know, there's, there's no end to it. It becomes difficult to implement such simple things, you know, like, um, so there are solutions, but still it becomes very complicated as it comes to India you know, as it comes to our case with so much of diversity. So, um, yeah, so so with this, we understood that we have we have art pieces which are open to interpretation and hence, uh, you know, uh, leaving it open could be beautiful enough. Here we understood that uh, since we are all from a certain kind of background, we do think that this is, a, you know, born of new art and so on so we do we do have uh, association with this as a new form of art uh, you know and uh, with this we understood that uh, you know uh, education is different thing still interpretation is a problem yeah it's not that we are not educated or nothing but still this is a real question that every common man does ask if it's a meaning gary you know, uh, it's not given as simple. So, um, yeah, with masters comes addressing massings is a very complicated thing. And, and that's the reality check that we all need to do. Um, you know, with, with everything, it is, uh, uh, you know, it's ever evolving kind of a thing. So many, many interpretations, a uh, difference in exposure will create that difference also, you know, the baggage or, or the, your past experiences will bring you to a certain uh, conclusion. And this is, this is a uh, way vast, you know, it comes through age, demographics, culture, language, everything. So, uh, and also, uh, you know, ever evolving pop culture, like I keep seeing weird language of language of SMS and texting and chatting has changed so much. You know, some people till they do not know they are not supposed to use caps lock and caps lock could mean that they are angry or something, um, you know, but only people who are you know, uh, exposed to this culture or exposed to say chat languages and so on would know about this and even more evolved people like they even come up with abbreviations SFC and you know it means something basically sometimes I need to google and see what does this abbreviation really mean so yeah it's complicated and uh, to catch up with all of this is, is quite something and hence the communication is uh, whether it's communication or say product, it is going to be very complex as you do it for masses. OK, so um, and hence and that's that's exactly why the Behance world would look pretty lovely. All like this and uh, the real world, uh, you know, it has to be really, really like what you can say. Um, it has to be basically accounting all practical constraints and then being designed. OK, it has to be maintenance free. It has to be see like 
this is a nice design and I wish there were things like this in India. But then uh, if you see in our environment, uh, you know, there will be so much of maintenance problem uh, with this. And say if it is a, a snowy place, of course, this is not going to work. So we need to see see what really works in our environment and what is the most simplest answer and not make it complicated basically. So our job is to kind of look at practical constraints and design something. So this is this is the thing, you know, why the Behance world looks in a certain way and the real world looks in a certain way. So um, let me take you through another project. Uh, this is the name project and um, uh, I can translate all the knowledge that we spoke about, you know, so far about, about, you know, the practical constraints and apply into a mass product and how, how we kind of, you know, uh, design something from there. So um, we were to design a soap, a uh, neem soap, and uh, here's a shot of neem soaps from the Behance world, okay? And I'm sure, I'm sure each one of us right now must be looking at these and saying, wow, okay, I know it, I know it. <laughs> so I know that, you know, something like this is nothing that we have seen in our shops, yeah? And so it's so exciting for us to kind of like, you know, for us, this is amazing. So, And the difference is very clear, yeah, pretty clear, right? So this is this is what is this is this this will actually explain you how and why, okay? So uh, while we speak about uh, you know there is differences and hence communications become become a very difficult task for masses, not because they are not smart, it's because they are very very smart, okay? They are open to many many more interpretations than the one you want them to take, okay? So they are very smart and never underestimate your consumers. They are really the gods. They are the ones closely and so very closely associated to nature that they can really judge the products very well. And what are they looking for? They're just looking for an honest and genuine product, okay? This is their one line simple need okay so as close as when you go to making something honest and genuine it will strike it will connect with masses and and you know it, it can do wonders so um they they are so i mean each each household almost each household expect, except for the metro cities do have understanding of which plant smells like what, what is the leaf like, what, what medical uh, purposes it can solve and you know what problems it can solve and so on. So you know this, this hands-on experience and this whole natural remedy thing is very deep rooted uh, in India. You know every household, I'm sure today also uh, your moms and your family must be forcing you to have some kadas and hot waters and I don't know what not for the corona. But this is the truth you know that every household before reaching out to a doctor for any problem would try a natural remedy and they do have exposure and knowledge about simple hopes and how they can be effective yeah so so they are very clever and we all in fact everyone everyone really has some basic knowledge of what say a tulsi can do what a neem can do and so on okay so um the project brief is very simple. This is Margo, how it looks, you know, how it used to look. And uh, we were asked to redesign and make something new. And uh, with a little bit of research, we did understand that the neem soap space is, is uh, you know, the green soaps are, are like a real space, like people do look for herbal soaps and green soaps. And um, it's a big market and, and there's a big need about it. And all the soaps would more or less have a visual of, uh, you know, uh, visual which would just look like three, three leaves or, you know, just a photo of name on the side and so on. So what, what we understood is people are just trying to, you know, more or less trying to use a twig in, in their uh, packs. So 
we wanted to do something different and we wanted to break that pattern so that we would stand out and we would have a signature way of doing things. So if you see uh, neem leaves, okay, neem ka pair usually circular uh, shadows throw karta hai, okay. So there are shadows which cast down a circular and very dreamy like. Even if you see from distance, there is a circular pattern that comes through, okay, uh, in the neem leaves. So, and, and uh, if you see, um, that's the way people recognize neem tree from far. They know that this is a neem tree because of this particular, particular uh, uh, way it is. So, um, and as I said, people do have knowledge about all this, right? So, uh, this is a best way to connect. And we kind of made a signature logo with, with the circular formation of, with, with the neem leaves. And this, this was the, you can say, our take on memes. And, um, and yes, with the environment semiotics, I could say that, you know, uh, people do talk about neem, neem ki peer ki chaya ke andar bahut acha neem data hai. Ya neem uh, in the morning or uh, when the sunlight, some sunbeam passes through it, it's quite dreamy and the, uh, it's, it's quite magical, you know, it's a, like a morning glory kind of a thing. So, to, with the environment also, we've tried to capture the, the dew drops or you can say the aging of leaf. You know, the leaf is a fresh green, then it turns into darker, darker, darker green leaf. So you've tried to capture the aging of the leaf. You've tried to capture the morning glow and uh, so on. So this is in the environment. Yeah. And that's, that's the difference, basically, the old and new. And how the semiotics will be carried forward in the face wash and hand wash and so on. So, um, yeah, over here we have added the wooden texture. Um, this is how the face wash looks. And again, as I said, um, it's not just about designing the packaging. It's about uh, the sensorial engineering, right? So, and, and that's exactly how people are going to uh, believe in your product as a genuine product, yeah? Unless and until the product does not taste like, smell like, uh, feel like, name, uh, you know, it's not going to strike the balance. So, um, this, is, this is, the formulation is something like a paste, okay? It's literally of the consistency if you take some meal leaves and crush them together, um, you know, the kind of paste it will form, it is literally that kind of a paste. And uh, we, we have kept it as simple and honest as that, you know. The color is absolutely of what a paste neem leaf would look like, somewhat in the similar zone. So it's, it's exactly that. It's so easy to relate then, you know. So that is what the entire range looks like. Uh, of course, every product did have its own journey, like the glycerin had its own journey, like the glycerin soaps is an another, another entire category and so on. But overall, to bring, bring it through, uh, the main point here is that as close to what the natural thing is, if you keep, there is no questions raised and the product is kind of accepted. Uh, very well with the masses, okay? And that is the major reason why the illustrations and the, you know, funky cool things of Behance World will not click with the masses. Because if you need to make a person understand and believe that this is very genuine, you have to keep the photo of the real neem leaf there. You do have to give the real uh, consistency of what a neem taste would be like. You have to uh, understand what is the color of neem uh, oil or neem paste and so on. So uh, as close as to what it should be, you know, what the natural form is, no sooner you divert from there. And imagine if I give you a neem soap and I'll say it's a pink color soap, uh, uh, but it's a neem soap, uh, your believability factor will drop down drastically. Yeah, so we need to be aligned. The concepts need to come close together while designing the packaging we do have to think about all the five senses while we're creating it and try to capture everything the entire experience is so important so um, yes margo is a mass product and we did manage to crack uh, thankfully better better design uh, and um, you know still be in the zone of ex being acceptable yet young 
and uh, you know so with, within the limits of practicality you know this this is what is the project looking like today so um let's talk about what next and um, you know how the pandemic is uh, affecting humans and how we are evolving with it so uh, yes it's been quite quite a year and uh, a lot of lot of different things are going on in each one's life to really comprehend to what's going on it's something that that the entire human race is facing you know after 100 years so not that anybody has knowledge how to take it from here you know so it is it is in a complete soup basically and and from here i think um i would say that you know we are at a diversion point literally literally at a diversion point where we are ready to let go of our old habits adapt changes we are so open and flexible each one of us like even if you uh, you know look outside you will you will see uh, even even a roadside beggar has understood that he has to put a mask uh, so like changes are at a mass level to happen is a very difficult task and we are standing at that turning point where the changes are happening and people are giving up their old habits forming new habits and adapting to changes yeah so this 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 happening at this level is something which is very new and um, perhaps uh, we should uh, kind of observe these changes yeah we should we should uh, perhaps uh, make a note of these things that we are observing in this it's a very unique experience this this is something that we are witnessing uh and i hope nobody else witness ever again after hopefully um but yeah it's an intense experience and um i would i would just suggest do keep a habit of observing and making notes of all the things that you observe and as how things are happening and how things are changing small small things like you know how we are we are, our decision making has changed how uh, the online systems are evolving and we are becoming more dependent on the online systems um you know many people are uh, trying to be more eco friendly uh, and have understood the importance of nature so um, this is that diversion point when the entire human race is open and yes vulnerable but open firstly for the first time ever open to receive something as a solution okay so i uh, yeah this is this is like the the time when now um, we will have to kind of accelerate the thinking you know so it's i would say for designers it's definitely not a pause mode okay please do not see this as a mode where you cannot do anything it's an accelerated mode we have to be on our toes we have to be the thinkers we have to be you know really really putting hard our minds to figure small solutions big solutions whatever comes to our mind in any direction you have to keep thinking because you know we do need to kind of uh, make it a habit to kind of shape every day and therefore you know repeatedly if we keep shaping each day i'm sure one day we will have a great and bright future so as a role of you know as a designer's role it's it's always been to find solutions it's always been taking something complicated and challenging and making it simplified right and and i would really want each and every student to really start thinking of how how things from here could be very very differently done okay so till now yes that was our journey and from now we are also started thing that you know perhaps things need to change completely in the packaging design world uh, we need to look for sustainable uh, ideas and we need to adapt to new things uh, it, we can no longer keep going in the way we are going so yes i i think every student needs to think from their capabilities from their discipline point of view from their experience point of view what is it that they can do new and don't think as you are too small or too uh, you know you're just student or something like that that you know mera kaun sunega types aisa kuch nahi hota you do have to constantly approach your dream and make it possible and firstly uh, definitely definitely first point do not think this is a possible this is not a possible for you you have to keep 
keep it going yeah and um, yes and hopefully one day we'll have a better future uh, just keep designing and keep sharing with the world internet is a platform where you can reach out to anyone in the world so do you make use of this platform where you were make hypothetical projects if you like but then do ex share it with many 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 reach out to many 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 and uh, perhaps um, that's that's the way we could have a great future and you know something will strike somewhere so yes thank you very much um so yeah thanks a lot uh, kanchan i think it was wonderful uh, your session uh, i like the, the way you explain understanding of uh, you know cultures of people and relating and connecting your product to it it was lovely and i hope that uh, all all our uh, uh, designers young designers uh, you know get inspiration from your talk and uh, get an understanding of the uh, real world in terms of packaging yeah, yeah. I, I do hope hope so, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. thank you thank yeah. you for inviting so, me yes okay yeah. oh. uh, i also would like to thank all our viewers today and uh, uh, please uh, be in touch next uh, week we'll have another talk with another expert so thanks a lot again thank you kanchan all thank right. you okay thank you everyone bye bye thank you ma'am thank you so much thank you thank you so much ma'am thank you thank you ma'am